What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 432nd episode of the Pokemon Podcast. It's super effective. I am your host, SBJ. With me, Greg. Hello. Uh, I do need to share with the world uh, my current pain, and I'm I'm talking to you, Australia. <laughs> Perth my, or the entire country? All, all of Australia. They are all complicit in this. Brent has discovered a, a new streaming app that has allowed him to watch Master Chef Australia Season 1. It is a, an unfathomable 72 episode long season. Oh, man. 72 episodes. And the theme song they have playing is the worst song I have ever heard in my life. Life is and it Kylie Minogue? Been, no, I wish. I don't even think. For all I know, it's not even the original song. It's whatever they put on after, like years later. Like that person's like, no, I'm gonna charge you a lot of money to play that internationally. It is atrocious, and it is an earworm, and it is stuck in my head, and I don't want it there. So Australia won. At most, a season should be 23 episodes, not 72. Talk to your international ind- distribution and say, just have silence. Silence to start the show. <laughs> just gentle pictures of people. Also, they have the, the contestants doing the stupidest things. At one point, one of the contestants kisses a fish. Why? Nobody knows. Hey, hey. It, the fish is dead. Is, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Will is here. I only need to complain about to whoever in the Pokemon world didn't watch Jurassic Park. Stop with all the Amora. No, <laughs> yes. they're not oh. suited for this world. They're so beautiful, though. They're th- Why they're do you majestic. think I'm shiny hunting them? <laughs> but... I know, I have, to, I have to start, but I'm real busy with other things right now. Uh, That's this, all. This show is just like you guys building up your complaints for a week and then airing them. Well, I mean, that's basically. what you bring us on for. Oh, it's true. Just also, if you didn't give us so much to complain about, it yeah. wouldn't be so easy. And if you weren't just a sellout shill, we wouldn't have to present the other side of the argument. Steve? I, I'm not even sure what you're referring to. <laughs> there, there's yeah, he's sold out avenues. so many times. <laughs> That we could be going down for this. All right, we got a loaded show for you all. Mostly going to be talking about the Crown Tundra. We will not be talking about story spoilers for the Crown Tundra. Although it is very short, uh, I guess we'll talk about the story next week. Um, Unless you're stuck in Dynamax Adventure or resetting for a Reggie. You probably have done the story. (laughs) It's not like terribly long. (laughs) I think it's I think it's longer than Isle of Armor though. Well, Isle of Armor, I guess this is not a s- spoiler. Isle of Armor is like one note. It's like here's the cub yeah. food, do the cub food. This is like we have four things to investigate. Which one do you want to investigate yeah. in which order? So, if if boy, Isle of Armor took me like 20 hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is basically going to take me the rest of the year. It is. Okay. Set aside some time. I've I've played a lot. I have it came out on Friday. I've put twenty hours into it in the last forty eight hours. I think that's a pretty good amount of time. Mm-hmm. I think I have things to say. I guess where 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 do we want to start? Do we want to just start with Dynamax Adventure or do we want to start with do the any general impressions? <laughs> general what impressions? Want? Let's do general impressions. Okay. My first impression is for some reason I thought it was going to be an island again. <laughs> <laughs> It clearly says it's a tundra. Yeah, I, I guess. It was just kind of weird seeing the train. Wait, do you take... expect Steve to know what tundra means? <laughs> just, we live in the tundra. It was just like, oh, Kinda. cool. We're, we're taking the train to the thing, and it's connected to the map already. So that's Wait, didn't we take the train to the Isle of Armor, though? No, because no, it's an I island. Gotta fly. You got to fly. Hmm. We did you go got to there the tra- from the train we station. We did go yeah. there to the train station, yeah. Yeah, you go under the tunnel, the non-existent tunnel between the Isle of Armor and... It's like the English Channel. Oh, we did take a train to the Isle of Armor. Yeah, you take a train. Yeah, because the scientist lady's in the train the station. station. Yeah, but how does the train get there? Underground Under, underwater, tunnel. like the channel. Yeah. Uh, I don't... You guys can go. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm still jarred about the, the not being an island. 
<laughs> so I would say the, the okay, the things that kind of got me one the, the the top thing is I don't understand why there's a band of unless this is probably explained at some point in the story I haven't gotten to a band of snow in the south and a band of snow in the north, <laughs> but there's yeah. like warm areas on either side <laughs> of both of them. Yeah, I like the layout. I, I very much uh, just kind of like the the terrain because one of my complaints of of of, uh, of Galar is just that the routes are too short, right? So mm-hmm. this is giving me like a really good area of and twists and turns and things to explore. And I I'm happy with the Pokemon that they've added. I'm not happy that Chespin is not one of them, which was my one of my goals for this. I think I remember my uncle at Nintendo say if they brought Chestnut over, they would have had to strike the meteor back down in Galar to kill all the fossils again. Oh. You can't have them all living at once. There you go. The story is a little goofy, but that's okay. Uh, I'm I I've just been having fun. I I decided yeah. that at first was going to do an all star team, so I went into Pokemon Home TM and just looked at my highest leveled Pokemon, and I was like, oh, these are the Pokemon I played in previous games, and I was like, I'm gonna grab my favorite ones of these and make a team out of them, like team? for like all time. T- well, you have to have six Pokemon to play. What? There's the game zero trainer battles. <laughs> but but I'm still gonna run an encounter different th- wait there is a train you walk out of the train station and you have to battle the dude yeah but then that was hydrogen it turns out wasn't doing too good uh so we put those guys away and now i have a team that is all ultra beasts and mm. that is a lot of fun and extremely creepy because when you have <laughs> ultra beasts follow you in the in the well, overworld Boy, did they decide to creep out the animations for those guys. <laughs> I was like, I want my Talonflame. Oh, you know what's fun? It's like when you stop walking, Talonflame like, lands behind you, sits there, and then yells at you, just yeah. like my cat. That's why yep. Talonflame had to go away. Um, <laughs> and then I would say the one story thing, I will not give any specifics, but I did walk into somebody's house, and I was like, how does they have that Pokemon... What? <laughs> that was my exact reaction. I don't think I don't think it's a spoiler. It's literally pretty. It's not like hidden behind anything. Well, but for somebody who hasn't played the game yeah. at all, they I also want them to have the reaction of how did what that Pokemon? Okay, that's yeah. fair. So there you go. The map is very cool, but I get lost all the time, uh, and I want for is more than on the Isle of Armor. I want a mini map for this one because I can't tell. Where I am because because of the weird band of snow <laughs> and there's multiple points of access, I get lost all the time. Um, I like the story. I think the story is better than Isle of Armor, so I'm happy there. All of it's it, a, or which part of like the well, multiple paths are you going? All right. Uh, I will say legendary story one, which is the one I've completed. Hmm. I think I think it's very pretty. Like I, I do think. It looks great, um, even like they took even better than the Isle of Armor. I just think it looks very good. I am slightly disappointed. I just sort of felt like you could have added more missing Pokemon than you did. That feels a little well. The light problem is to me of the hundred Pokemon they added, like sixty of them are either legendaries or ultra beasts, right? So it's. So then when and you so, have, like, Nido King and Nido Queen, you're like, well, that's another six. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just like the walking around in the real world. There's a lot of ones that I've already seen before, and that's a little... That was just a little... It's not terrible, but I'm like, you could have you could have easily added more of the old ones here. And had those been a, a bigger surprise than, like, Zubat is back. and. As awful as ever. <laughs> yeah. Somebody somebody at that yeah. company loves Zubat. I, I don't know why or who, but stop. Stop it. Just stop. Don't worry. If they're going to keep to their word of not every Pokemon will be in every Pokemon game going forward, maybe Zubat, Zubat and Goldeen will, will be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, hopefully Zubat and Goldeen make the cut. 
Ugh. So I think that I think just sort of the lack of added in Pokemon was a little disappointing. I think everything's beautiful. There were there are things that I did in there that I didn't expect, and they were big surprises. Um, I don't know. Like you can shake every tree, no matter their size, and things will happen. Mm-hmm. And that Ooh, was a I didn't fun try surprise. that yet. Yeah, that was a fun surprise. I one thing I also wanted to say now that it just came to mind is I wish they would just stop reformat the games, stop doing character animations because you guys obviously don't understand how humans move or interact <laughs> with each other. So please. It's 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 creepy and disturbing. The the thing that I couldn't help notice is like this is in the original wild area. There is mm-hmm. The you know the initial same complaints got lost very big love it confusing wish there was a map I think this applies to every new area but there are no yeah. like houses in that and technically the Isle of Armor is all considered a wild area and there's only one house just the dojo right oh there's a house and then there's the two the two towers the two towers that you can and only go into once and the train station and then never again <laughs> yeah but I will say they are good markers. They are good markers. And then they they did a little village in the Crown Tundra, which is like, yeah. oh, cool. Maybe we're getting closer to having this as being the norm. And I think that's kind of what a lot of people are, are hoping for or reaching for is they want the whole game to be wild area. Mm-hmm. Well, however you describe that. <laughs> that's the best I could describe it. I don't open know. Open world. Open they world. want the game to be open world. But that little village is like like three houses and four people. <laughs> <laughs> it's four houses. There's one point where the game tells you like talk to all the villagers, and yeah, you're, and you're like, oh, the three. <laughs> like I got to talk three. to Betty and Shirley over here, and like, I got to talk to the. There was still one that I missed, and I was like, where is this? I I I, I swear I've talked to it. Oh, it's because they use the same character model for three of yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's like it's not the person that's just sitting there. That's not no, okay. They can do eight hundred plus Pokemon models, but a time and time again, we're only allowed twelve <laughs> character models. We have we have long since determined that triplets, quadruplets, are very very common in the Pokemon world. Uh, I like Peony a lot, though. Um, I do too. He is very cringeworthy in like the good ways. Yeah, the daughter, uh, like. Not as memorable to me, I think. Well, she's there very briefly. Well, she's always Um, in the cave telling you that she'll uh, haggle you a legendary for five Dynite ores. I mean, Dynite ores. She gave me a an item. Yeah, this is actually the thing I I'm a little disappointed in. Not that big of a deal, but when you uh, unlock the uh, Isle the Crown the Isle of Armor, the Isle of Crown Tundra, the Isle of Armor, um. You just can just go back to the old stores and buy the new clothing, mm-hmm. but there's no shopping pass in the Crown Tundra. It seems like the main way to get clothing is in between Dynamax adventures. You have to remember to talk to her. Yeah. And she will give you clothing items in between. She'll be like, oh, I found this on the floor. I don't like it. Here's for you. So if you oh, want like that? Team okay. Flair's goggles or get Gets uh, yeah. eye... She, I haven't talked to her enough. She gives you all that, but you have to remember to talk to her in between. And if she says, like, I have a Landorus for five Dynite ore, you can say no and then talk to her again. And then she'll be like, I found this uh, hat. Would you like it? Oh, I was only talking to her once between raids. I will keep talking to yeah, her. Yeah, just every, every time me. in between, just talk to her. I honestly thought by the style of her hair that she was more tied to the legend of this pass than she is. I don't wait. What's the, what's the issue that what do you mean? Peony wants to do Dynamax adventure. Yeah. And she wants to do Dynamax adventure, but she doesn't want to do it with him. Is that just the, that's no, the whole, no, yeah. no, 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 no. He wants to do the legendary tour. Did you not right. see his childlike? Drive? <laughs> <laughs> so he planned out an entire tour of the entire crown tundra. Yeah. To do all of these things. And Which she did just not wants- include the Dynamax adventure right. at all. Because he thinks it's too dangerous. Oh, and okay, she okay, okay, okay. only wants to do Dynamax adventures. So she pawns her dad off on you. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But I literally, when I first met her, 
And she turned around and she has that bulbous crown like hairstyle. I thought, oh, she's tied. She's gonna be the one that's gonna start off this whole this whole legendary Kalrix adventure. And nope. <laughs> she just sits in a cave. Uh do we wanna talk about Dynamax Adventure? Yeah. I mean it's what I've spent most of my time doing in the Crown Tundra. <laughs> yeah, I have done um I've done about 24, 25 Dynamax adventures, uh, which is a lot. A lot. It's four, like four Pokemon times 25 is 100. So I guess I've seen 100 Pokemon at this point. So it is a little bit different than we thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, I was expecting like four to five Pokemon before Legendary. It's a hard three. Yep. It it looks like more because of the the branching paths, but they... they, branch it in a way where you're only doing three the other thing is which is very different is there are no shields on these pokemon yep not even on the legendary (laughs) there's no shields yeah and it they still must have i think it's because of the rentals or like i'm i'm sure all the rentals were made in in a way but the most i've ever been able to do damage wise to a single pokemon is about 50 percent so it was possible to like two shot a Pokemon. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard yeah, to find. But you, yeah. You really have to have a good, like the exact right combination for that to happen. Even with no shields, the whole process, which which I was saying for a couple of weeks, is 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 almost twenty minutes. Like you are, it it yeah. from start to finish, it's about twenty minutes. I started. I timed every one I did. Or for the sake of this conversation, the fastest I was ever able to do it was 15 minutes. The longest it took me for one was 22 minutes. But on average, I was completing yeah. almost all of them in about 17, 18 minutes. And that's not counting the time it takes to get the the group together. I started the oh. timer. I started the timer once we started picking our, um, once everyone hit ready, I started the timer. And you never had to play with NPCs, right? I played with, uh, we had, in in the 24, 25 I did, we had two people disconnect, um, and so an NPC filled their slot, and it was, I don't my know. First, my first run through was all NPCs. I did the first one by myself, because oh, it was that, early yes, in the morning, yes. and I was like, Ugh. What was funny is the person that disconnected, because I was streaming this on Twitch, they got three NPCs in their place, so they were still in the Dynamax adventure. Huh. And we got the one NPC for that person, and they were able to get to the legend and beat the legend before <laughs> us. Well, it's like the NPCs either do absolutely the worst choices, right. or they do like, yeah, yeah, that was a good idea. Thanks for coordinating <laughs> and doing that the right way. Right. They are very hit or miss. Uh, when they are hit, they're great. So I know, I know people want us to talk about this. Uh, I will... Disclose here that there are there is a data miner. This data miner has been wrong in the past. This data miner has been right in the past. This is the <laughs> same data miner that Serebii used, but they initially tweeted that um, Dynamax Adventure had no increased shiny odds based on the player ID. This is getting really complicated, but pretty much your player ID that the game assigns you, which is what you can see on your trainer card, it's like probably like one one two seven six nine or whatever, that number is what rolls the thing that determines a shiny. And they ultimately said that, like, there was no extra rolls going through Dynamax Adventure without the shiny charm that they saw. And then about an hour later, they looked at a different thing, and ultimately, to make this easy, it's pretty similar to the wormhole stuff. So if you remember Ultra Wormholes and Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, there was a base percentage i think it was a base one percent of a pokemon being shiny we're talking about the 20 pokemon not the legendary pokemon so that's like the altaria the um obama snow the hip up uh the hip down boy it sounds like you've seen some fun ones because i think i saw <laughs> basculin about eight times <laughs> basculin is not in the ultra wormholes <laughs> no no Bas- basculin's on the dynamax adventure oh dynamax adventure oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So those Pokemon had a base 1% to be shiny in, in the Ultra Wormholes, but the Ultra Wormhole determined, didn't use your shiny charm or your player ID, it determined how many rings the Wormhole had, 
and how far you went. And it went from like 1% to like, I, don't, I can't remember, it was like maybe 36% a chance of being shiny doing that. So the data miner then discovered, I'm only putting this disclaimer because there could be more to it, there could be less to it. Remember, we the data miner originally thought there was chaining involved with uh, overworld method. That with the shiny charm, there is a 1 in 100 chance per Pokemon you encounter, and you encounter 4, a Dynamax run. with your. Uh, there's a 1 in 100 chance that that Pokemon will be shiny at the end of the adventure. They're never, they're never shiny while you're fighting them. Yeah. Everyone will have a different role at the end. Um, so Will could get shiny Basculin, and I could not get shiny Basculin, for example. And if you don't have the shiny charm, you have a th- one in 300 chance, because remember the shiny charm gives plus two of getting a shiny through the adventure. So there is some misinformation about here where uh, YouTubers and other content creators are saying that it's a one in 25 chance of being shiny. It's technically not true because well, each encounter is a one in a hundred chance. Right. You could, I guess the way you, you say it the is the is, adventure, the entire 20 yeah. minutes is a 1 in 25 chance. Yeah. Because it's, there's four chances out of 100, basically. Right. That one of them will be. So every time you go on a, on a chance, there's a 1 in 25, there's a 1 in 25 chance that one of the four will be shiny. So you're spending ultimately 20 minutes for community day odds yeah which i'm sure that was thought about right like there's it's it's yeah. it's um but but i was i was completely wrong in the sense that i didn't think they would do anything i just thought i thought there would be shields i thought there would yeah. be i thought it would just just like i thought everyone if it was shiny it would be shiny for everyone i thought shiny charm doesn't affect raids at the old raids so why would it affect these raids but also, Dynamax Adventure doesn't even use YCOM. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we get there, because we're still talking about yeah. patching and everything like that, don't, don't waste your good balls, people. Yes. Uh, it is guaranteed catch for everything. Get just Pokeball, Premier Ball, if you want to feel special. Oh, yeah. We, we, there is yeah, no I, problem I, catching that, anything I, in these things. That, that, that will come up on my list of, of complaints about Dynamax Adventures. Yeah, for maybe somebody who hasn't purchased the DLC or maybe on the fence. Dynamax, <laughs> I love Dynamax Adventure. I, I think love it too. I love Dynamax I Adventure. I love it a lot. <laughs> that, that I have minor, minor, I have minor complaints. Um, but overall, it is pretty much what I want to do every time I start up Ground Hunter right now. I yeah. want to find people online. I want to go and just like and say, hey... Let's run some. Let's let's run some layers. Let's let's see what we get because it's it's it is just really fun. The fact that they added rental so that everybody has a very specific like you aren't a level one hundred power through it, it. They are all calibrated to do very specific things. You have to think of strategy. You have to look at their moves. You have to look at the layer and sort of plan out. Will this get me to the end? Like all of that is really exciting. It's really exciting to like have like this minor puzzle of how to do this layer successfully. You have to argue with your friends because they <laughs> chose the wrong path or they didn't say what path they needed to do fast enough in that daggone 10 second timer yeah. to It's real uh, short. And it's like 10 seconds to pick a path, 10 seconds to pick an item if you come across a backpacker. Oh, and rando scientist, could you possibly mention which, <laughs> which? extra Pokemon? <laughs> could you just tell me which one you have? Oh, the first time that happened, I was ready to turn around and, oh, hmm, I don't yeah. get violent, but man, that was I, I was heading towards a water legendary. I had an electric, and the scientist said, oh, hey, I have something to switch out. And I was like, well, I haven't seen this before, so sure. Uh, and it gave me a poison type, and I'm like, "Sure, sure, this of is absolutely the thing I do not need to finish this this layer." Uh, but yeah. never again. I will say that as as a real sign of like approval of of the Dynamax adventure part. I mean, 
I, I literally sat for five hours yesterday, nonstop, yeah. just yep. doing Dynamax adventure. I did too. And I, I did just too. Like, that is how much I enjoy doing them. I have complaints. Of course I do. Oh, I was uh, just going to explain what it was real quick for people who haven't tried it. Oh, sure. It. Go for it. So uh, uh, when, you, when you go into Dynamax Adventure, you can either partner up with uh, NPCs or you could just partner up random. If you wanted to always get uh, a group of real people, you could probably type in 69696969 or 1111111 because um, unlike YCOM, it doesn't need people on your friends list, right? Uh, so you can just... You can just type in a number um, and then match with other people that have typed in that same number. Think of it more like uh, surprise trade. Or not surprise trade, but the link trade, link trade where it, it was broken before. Uh, <laughs> and then they added more numbers to fix it. Uh, and then you get th- then you get three Pokemon that will appear, three rentals. Uh, none of them will have held items. You get to see their move sets. Uh, the, these Pokemon, there. I think there are. I think Serebi says there's like 260 Pokemon that you can pick. The like Executor, Clefairy, Comfey, Celio, <laughs> uh, like Sigilyph. Like there's a bunch that come through that you probably, you know, most people don't maybe think of using throughout their adventures or whatnot. Anyways, you see three. You pick one. A new one comes in. And the, then the other two that were still there are left over. Well, and then, wait, wait, wait. The person who's hosting the Dynamax gets to pick first. Yes. And then it's like the order that you joined that right. you get to then select. So, yeah, once that person picks one, it's not like, well, there's only two left. They slot in a new Yeah, rando. it's like a very card game thing where they, like, flip over and they slot in. and then so It's a draft. Uh, yeah, it's drafting. And then everyone picks, and then usually the start is two different ways, and you know what the final legend well, will be based on they, type. They show you one of the types of the final legend. Right. Yes. So, like, if they show you ghost, or if they show you dragon, or if they show you psychic, you're still... <laughs> you yeah, or you can kind of everything. maybe think of what like if they're showing flying, you'd be like, well, it could be Lugia, it could be Hoa, it could be Zapdos, it could be Rayquaza. Like you, you know, it's at least not going to be Zerk uh, Right when yeah. you get to the end, and then you you can take either path, and you you have to play who's that Pokemon very quickly because you can see you can see a little bit of their outline depending on how big they are in the mist that they're hidden in and then there's a couple people along the way that uh probably influences the decision more than it should there are the scientist people um and they will be the one that will say i will give you a random pokemon good luck (laughs) right well it's like it's like i will trade you the one that i have although i'm not going to tell you what it is for the one that you (laughs) for the one that you have there and it's a the devil's bargain don't do it there are berries on the ground all that yes. does is replenish your health, not fully. Uh, it replenishes your health. It does not remove status condition like paralysis or poison or frozen, um, which then leads to the point of when you walk out of your first raid battle, your HP, your PP, your everything is 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 it does not get refreshed. Right. It it is you are stuck. At, with where you stopped after each raid battle. So you have to carry through with the health and everything that you ended the whatever raid battle you just came out of, with the exception of swapping. So, yeah, if you walked out of a raid battle with uh, like a 20 HP left Machoke, you might be the one that wants to take the new Pokemon, not because you love the new Pokemon, but mostly because like you will probably faint going into the next battle. And it's four feints for the entire adventure, not four feints per raid. Right. S- which gets to the other point of if you make it to the legendary and you only have one feint left and you faint, uh, you get kicked out of the Dynamax adventure. You still have the option to ca- to pick one of the three Pokemon you've caught prior to that. Because remember, you catch three non-legend Pokemons before the legend. But you don't. You have to do the whole thing over mm-hmm. at that point. But you still walk away, I guess, with the consolation prize, and you still walk away with Dynite or as well. 
the other things that you can find, so there are berries, berries replenish, there's the scientist, she swaps you normally with a Baskelin, and then there's the, uh, there's the hiker, the back, the girl backpacker, and she's probably the best one to talk to, because she will give you a held item, and sometimes that held item is Eviolite, which is huge if you have, like, Charmeleon, or Executor, or Clefairy, or Chansey, because they benefit from Eviolite. The other Wait, thing, Executor does not benefit from Eviolite. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just like saying Executor because <laughs> I keep using them. But that is that is something that I want to bring up. In the rental Pokemon, which was this was a little unexpected for me, is a lot of non-fully evolved Pokemon. So you yeah. may get like a middle evolution um, as like what you're... T- I, look, I took out Curim with a Combusken, okay? <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> I think those are the three, right? The hiker, the scientist, and then the berries. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all I've seen. I think yeah. that's all I've seen. And yeah, I it's it's uh every every Pokemon has a hundred percent catch rate. So you can use whatever Pokeball you want on. But again, keep in mind that you do not know if the Pokemon is shiny or you don't know if it's hidden ability. Well, I guess you could maybe guess if it was hidden ability, what depending on how it well, you'll performed know in the raid. But you also see it when you get to choose it. Right. I'm just saying, so, like, if, you're, if you really want a hidden ability G-Max Kingler and you were saving your lure ball for it, oh, you yeah, throw yeah. it, and then when you get to the end, you get to pick four Pokemon, and if you decide not to take the Kingler, you lose that lure ball forever. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my complaints. But also, how excited was I that, that they have the Gigantamax Pokemon in there? Yeah. Like I got a Gigantamax Butterfree, which I didn't have because because of that. So that I was super pumped for that. Um also shout out uh yes, it's a hundred and fifty Dynite ore, but you can now just buy Beast Balls. Yep. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I don't think that rotates either. So they've had I think they now have a way to get every Pokeball. If you yep. want the Apricorns, you do the Scamomatic, which is a one percent. <laughs> Or a one in one thousand <laughs> chance if you want a safari ball or a sports ball, which the sports ball is pretty cool. We haven't had the zero way to get sports ball outside of Heart Gold Soul Silver, the bug catching contest, and I this is the one way to get the beast ball now is to pay a hundred a hundred and fifty is a lot I think for beast ball. It's a lot. Especially since the most I've ever gotten from a raid is 10. Yeah, I think you can get up to 12, but I'm not sure what triggers the 12. I know the 10 is you get 8 for completing an adventure with friends. Yep. And then you get 10 for completing an adventure with friends as long as there was no feints at all. Yes. But I heard 12 is the most, but I'm not sure how to get 12. I don't know how you get 12. Yeah, I don't I know what's left. That. You take... Uh, what? It, uh, yeah, I don't know. You don't swap don't out. Know. You... Oh, it could be if you. Oh, I don't know. You don't swap out. You don't take any damage. That seems impossible. That seems impossible. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, don't sleep yeah, on Clefairy though. If they present you Clefairy, Clefairy's boss. <laughs> Clefairy with friend guard in, like increases the the defense. Clefairy knows life. Do oh, Clefairy's yeah. good. Clefairy's oh, Cryogonal. Yeah. If you like Cryogonal Combuskin or cry, no Cryogonal Torkoal is a great combo because Cryagonal is going to know that solar beam and not have to like spend a time charging up. And it knows, uh, what's the one that does uh, increases your special defense? Um, not reflect. Light Wait. screen. Amnesia? Light screen. Oh, light screen. Yeah. I will say, uh, piece of advice on Dynamax Adventures um, because I don't have a list of complaints like Greg does, so uh, minor I'll, minor I'll complaints. Stay with the positive. Um, and I wish I had known this because Kiram was literally the first one that I came across, and now I'm like, mm. when you get to the end and you ha- you're presented with your four that you caught in front of you, um, and you you can look at their stats, right? And mm-hmm. you can check the stats, and that's how you see if one of them is shiny. Um. If you want the legendary as a shiny, and it's not shiny in that run through that you did, take one of the other Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Yep, and leave the because then you can go back through and do that legendary some other time and have the opportunity. So that's like how you can shiny hunt for a specific legendary. 
And the, you can save that raid, so you can tell the person up front, hold that as one of my three saved layer well, raids. Well, you, you save that path. You save yeah. that path, yes. yes. And you can do so this So you with... still have to go through the entire, well, all the way through the up to the fourth one, but yep. um, you don't get to just, like, pop straight back to Kiram, but still... You, you don't have to r- randomly hope that it pops up again either. She'll hold on to right. three. She'll hold on to yeah. three. And she can hold on to version exclusives. Um, so, like, for example, Thunderous is exclusive to Shield, I think. Um, so if you're a sword player and you join a Shield raid and that, that Shield host takes you to Thunderous, you don't normally see Thunderous in your game. So I would recommend at the end saving the Thunderous for yourself if you you know, want to go back and get a certain nature or if you want to go for shiny because that this was like a, a very smart thing that they did is, you know, even if you don't care about shinies, I mean, obviously it seems like they built this in for people who did want to shiny hunt. Yep. But let's say, you know, you just want an adamant whatever, adamant Sogalio. I don't even think that's the right <laughs> nature, but uh, <laughs> and you go through and your Sogalio is timid, you can say like, I'll pass on it. Um, I'm waiting for this. Uh, so you have, you have the option to do that as well. Um, and you pick one at the end. I think, I think we talked about all the mechanics of it. Yeah. I think so. I can't think of anything we've left off. Like I like the con- I, I I like that like, it's like a it's like a win and lose situation. I like that you can just do it in the cave. You just go to the cave. Yep. Everything's there. You don't have to explore, walk around. You just get back in line, say I'm looking for more people. Cue me up. Let's go. But I do like the exploring of the other dens, but also I have no desire to do the other dens because I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've done the other dens. The other dens are still fun. There's still things out there that I haven't. Yeah, I think run right into. I, I, if if the if, if the Pokemon Company was to do like another Waylord weekend or another Clefable weekend or another Pikachu weekend, I I think those are fun and I think that's good. Um, yeah, it's just you know if if somebody at this point has played through the base game, has played through the Isle of Armor, there's not a lot of new Pokemon to do those dens for. Like, I no. can see the Nido Kings, I can see the Amoras, I can see the Kabutos in the wild and the Zubats, and I'm not sure what I would need to go to a den for at this point. I have all the Gigantamax um, Pokemon, I, you know, maybe maybe if I was Hidden Ability hunting here, something. Yeah, I was Hidden Ability hunting, but there are, because everything's still weather-based, there are some, like, that I didn't see in the overworld that I did run into fossil Pokemon in raid dens, and I did do those. So they were, I, you know, I know they're in the game. I don't know what under what weather conditions they'll show up, but here's a raid, and I can just do it here. So I'll just do it. Like, I'm already checking them to get the Watts, so if it's one that I haven't had before, I might as well just throw it up. Um... Like yesterday, I ran into Armaldo, I ran into G-Max, Gengar, I ran into a Sableye that I thought I'd just do for Shiny. So there were things that I was like, well, I'm already here, I might as well throw it up. And it also appears in the YCOM, which Dynamax Adventures don't. Yeah. Oh! That the, complaint one. <laughs> the the other thing is the catching, I just want to... Uh, 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 expand on that a bit so like if you're going through and you're shiny hunting landorus for example and you decide not to catch landorus obviously you have to go through the all 20 minutes to get the shiny check again even though at the end we now know with the asterisks unless something changes from the data miner that it's a one in a hundred chance every time you encounter landorus for it to be shiny if you have the shiny charm if you have the shiny charm thank you not everybody does right if you catch the landorus then uh, you will never get another Landorus to catch. Yep. You can still battle Landoruses in the future. You just will not have the option to catch them once you catch yours. Now, yeah. uh, this is, I've never seen this before, but I've gotten a lot of the questions this weekend. Hey, if I caught my Suicune and I release it into the wild, does Suicune come back into my Dynamax <laughs> adventure? No, do not do that. No, don't do that. Which I is why I'm happy that I have a copy of both games, so that yeah. when I meet Kiram again, I will not 
Just keep it. Yeah. I mean, I kept my Suicune, but I already had a shiny Suicune. Since well, that was the first one that I did, and I wasn't sure if it was increased shiny odds or not. So I just caught it to see what that experience was. Yeah. I wonder if um, everybody gets Suicune as their first. I did not. I got... Uh, no, okay. some didn't. I, I think it's... I think it's as random as everything else, but yeah, Suicune was my first and a few others. But Suicune a was a lot of people's there. first. Did you? I yeah. I wonder if Suicune was your first because you did NPC. Oh, possibly. Oh yeah, I did mine fully solo. I as did well. mine solo. I did my first one with a group, and I got uh, I got like Evil Tall or something. Mm. Bacon. Last week I I was like I'm not going to shiny hunt these because I'm not going to, I'm not going to do a one in four thousand for twenty minutes. It is twenty minutes still. It is twenty minutes, but it's a one in a hundred chance. Uh, which and kind it's of, fun. It's one in a hundred, and it's a good time. Yeah, and yeah. it's a good like it's so much like doing these battles, even though they're raid battles, because you're forced in these situations to use Pokemon you're not used to. Yeah, um, because people forget. I mean, I've had we've we've lost like I've lost before I got to Landers, which is really frustrating. You know, you could be like, oh, it's one in a hundred for Landers. <laughs> well, let me well, try to at least get there because somebody picked a Maractus and the other three people picked water Pokemon. And now Maractus is just sucking up every water movement. We can't attack. Um, so there's been really yeah. fun situations like that where it's like, ah, oh, we failed this raid, but yeah. at least we're having a good time. So but I'm... it's still fun. It's fun to fail still, you yeah. know? I mean, it will probably not be fun to fail four months from now, but it is still, it's still fun now. The other thing I didn't even think about is, like, I get to, I get, I, I like, I got to a Zapdos and I'm like, I guess I can catch it, but... What I have, I yeah. have 20 Zapdos in yeah. Let's Go Pikachu, yeah, Let's Go Eevee, that. and I have mm. four shiny Zapdos in Pokemon Go. I I should actually just, like, I don't need it to be shiny. I just don't, <laughs> like... Uh, yeah, well, that's an interesting, like, call. You just, the ones that you don't want shiny, you just catch them and pull them out of your rotation. But it, it, I guess it pulls it out of your rotation. Right. But you, if you're joining other people's, it doesn't pull it out of there. So that's like right. the weird thing I'm thinking of, of like, for me, I guess I, if I am going to shiny hunt, I'm going to shiny hunt the few that I don't have. Like I have, gosh, because of Pokemon go and because of let's go and because of sun and moon, I have so many of these legends shiny. Like I have every shiny ultra beast except for Buzzwall and Kartana. Cause I was too lazy to switch <laughs> to the other version of the game. Yeah. I, I am all about shiny hunting, shiny hunting, ultra beasts yeah now. but it's like i have i have three four of the Moltraces, the zapdos the articunos from let's go and from pokemon go and it's like i have all of these shinies so that there's only very few i don't have like i, I don't have landorus i don't have thunderous and tornadoes and i don't have the lake spirits and that's kind of it mm -hmm. and then i'm i'm thinking like what am I going to do for Reggie Drago and Reggie Cash Register? And I'm I'm probably just going to catch them because it to me it feels weird of having only one registered in my Pokédex and that one being shiny. So I guess I catch it and then if I do decide I want to shiny hunt it, which it, by the way the the new Reggies are not in Dynamax Adventure. Uh, none no. of the Reggies are in Dynamax Adventure. They have they're one of the four different storylines you can do. One of them is Calyrex, one of them is the Reggies, one of them is the Galarian Birds. To the, which is kind of confusing. The Galarian birds are out in the world, but the yeah. regular Kintonian birds are in Dynamax Adventure. Yeah. The, all the Reggies are out of Dynamax Adventure. Yeah. So I, if I'm going to decide to shiny hunt the Reggies, I'll wait to a second copy because I do want a regular of the new Reggie. <laughs> like, do we know if the Urshifus are actually in the Dynamax Adventure? They're not. There's no Urshifus. Oh, okay. um, there is, uh, there is a Type Null and uh, Savali. The Urshifus, Cosmo, Cosmoam. These are legendary Pokemon that do not appear in the Dynamax Adventure. Um, Lunala and Sogaleo do. They're version exclusive. I've heard uh, Zygarde is the biggest nightmare in the entire yeah, world. I've heard that too. Because of power construct. So very happy I'm sitting on three toothpaste Zygards from GameStop because <laughs> that will be one Pokemon I will catch right away. I've heard just nightmares of people failing yeah. Zygarde over and over again. Can I get my minor complaints out of the way? Yeah. Wait, what? wait, wait. Let one more. Oh, come before... on. I promise this is super quick. For the Unova fans, if you 
get your Curum and your Zekrom and your Reshiram and you're like, I want to mix up the DNA of these dudes. Where do I get my DNA splicers? You go up to stow inside the dude who sells you the cracked pots and the chipped pots. He will hand you a DNA splicer and a life do. All right, Greg, all yours. <laughs> okay. One doesn't appear in Ycom and it's not very clear how to join somebody else's uh, yeah, layer raids. Yeah. Can you explain? How, okay. I want to yes. join Greg's raid. How do I do it? Where do I go? Okay. So first, I will set a link code. And then when through uh, somehow some means outside of the game, confirm that everybody is in front of the scientist in the lair, ready to go. Then I will put in my code and say, invite others. Then you, the person that wants to join mine, puts in the exact same code and then says, invite others. And what it does is everybody who has the same code ends up together, which since humans are still bad at numbers, means that sometimes multiple people, since there's millions of playing, have picked the same code as you. No, no, no. You always just start with zero because all the lazy people start with one because it's the first one. You got to work. You got to go down to zero. You got to put the effort. As a person that started with seven multiple times and still had people jump into other people's raids, there's a million people playing and a million combinations. I have never had a random join my raid. Well, I always bully started, for you. I always started with zero. I never started with one. Because zero is so far out of the way. I That's have the never threat. started with one either. I have started way down below, just like you what you have You can't start with done. sevens? People like seven. Lucky seven. People like seven, zeros. Seven, seven. People, who are, people who are now listening to this program are going to start doing zeros <laughs> because of you. So stuff that. Let me tell you my second best number. <laughs> <laughs> so So stuff it. You're, it's going to happen because there's so many people playing the game right now. So you have to put in the same code and hit invite others and then verify outside okay, of the game again Are you again making that all in. eight digits unique? Yes. Or are you doing like 7007-7007? No. My digits are unique and it <laughs> happened. Don't, don't even try that garbage with me, Steve. I know what I'm talking about. It is still Are a problem. Are you doing 420, 420, 69? I'm doing 6969, Yeah, that's two, your problem, 696969. Six, 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 no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing unique numbers. And it still happens. Like, it just happens. But that whole process of getting everybody to join in the two-minute, or is it three-minute, somewhere in their window, is a bit of a nightmare. Um, especially since people's outside names, if you're, say, in Slack, and their in-game names don't match, and you're like, is this you? Or who are you? So the fact that that process also isn't explained anywhere in the game, it's just like, I don't know, is this how we do it? And then eventually it works. But you have to, everyone has to put in the same code and hit invite others, and you all should pop into the same raid together. That process is a bit of a nightmare. I am not a fan. Minor complaint two is since you don't know if it's going to be shiny at the end, it makes your choice of Pokeball through the gameplay more difficult. Because if you really want a shiny uh, Jigglypuff in a friend ball, you can send that friend ball out. And if that Jigglypuff is shiny, isn't shiny, you've wasted that ball because you don't get the balls that you used on the other three Pokemon back. They are gone. So you sort of have to decide is... What balls am I going to use? Am I going to be happy having this shiny in this ball that I don't want it in? Or am I willing to constantly take the risk of I'm going to use my friend ball on this legendary and hope that it's shiny? I've only got 10 shots at this. The fact that those balls are wasted is a minor complaint. It's a little bit frustrating because for people who really want to use the apricorn balls and those are already hard to get it's a hard it's a hard decision to make do i waste it not knowing if it's going to be shiny if you really want to shiny an apricorn ball you have other ways to do it you do you absolutely do but it is like i said it's a minor complaint yeah. about about this that you that even in the raid itself you don't know until the entire thing is over and then it determines shiny and so I'm just throwing everything in luxury balls. I have 999 of them, and I like luxury balls. So that's not a huge decision for me. But for other people, 
it is like, well, I really want it in this. Am I going to use this ball now on on the one in one hundred chance that it's shiny and in the ball that I want? Yeah, that's just the fact that you don't get those balls back after you've caught them because you can only pick one is my only is it. It's again, it's a minor complaint. It's it's up there with the fact that I just really want a way to swap a ball in game. I want to be able to put my starter. <laughs> there was a game in with a, a Pokeball ball factory in. that they never took advantage right. of. Right, like that would just fix that problem. Like, and that's just like those are my two minor complaints. It's a little frustrating. There's no there's no in game way to communicate with other people, so you do have to rely outside the game, which I tend to not like, and. Your ball choices are use it and lose it if you don't pick that Pokemon. Because it is a guaranteed catch rate, so it's very tempting to use these balls, but you don't know if they're shining until the end. So it can come across as, I use this ball and, you know, I've just lost my last moon ball because it wasn't shiny. Yeah. So just know that going in, that you, if you use that ball to catch that Pokemon and you don't take it, you lose that Pokeball. No matter what it is, it doesn't come back. Worst case scenario, if you really wanted hidden ability, cra- brawler is not in the game. <laughs> if, you, if you want, like, hidden ability uh, Machoke, and you used your Moon Ball, worst case scenario is you can at least take it to the daycare and breed the Moon Ball down. Yeah. So it's not a complete waste. But, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, like, but on Legendaries, you you know, it, it's a use it, lose it. And hope that it's shiny because you don't get to see in the actual raids. And yeah. that, again, like those are the two things that I'm like. I think that's the, I okay. think that's the good trade off that they've yeah. they've done there. They they've they've given you an increased shiny chance, right? And the trade off is it's kind of like I think of it like like wormhole or like chain fishing. I remember I'm sure this is going to happen once Monday comes because the game came out over a weekend. But I'm sure you're going to see like. Oh my gosh, shiny hunting so broken and it made it so easy. <laughs> Which is funny because yeah, like six months ago, people were complaining that it was not hard or it was too hard or not fair or whatever. There's like a limit to that, right? So this is right. the same thing that happened with chain fishing. People were like, oh, it's so broken. It's easy shinies. But there's only so many fish in X and Y that you could have chain fished for. Right. And then each route had like three different fish. And then you were like, wow, cool, I got all three fish. It was really hard. It was like 60% Magikarp, 30% Barboach, 10% Goldeen. I got that 10% Goldeen. And you're like, wow, I love chain fishing. And then you go to another route and you're like, okay, well, this one also has Magikarp, but it has like <laughs> Seedra and Quillfish. And then you like get all those three and you, you may have gotten like a couple extra Magikarp. And then you go to another route and you're like, all right, well, this one has Goldeen and Magikarp <laughs> and Seedra. Like, I, like you, there's a, there was a limit to that. Right. And and there was a limit to wormholes. And the same thing happened. People were like, oh, wormholes broken. So easy, shiny. They're just handing them out like candy. My grandma has 17 shinies because of it. And she's only played 10 minutes. But once you get like 15 of the 20 shinies, it was really hard to get the last five because you had no control. You could control the wormhole you went into, but then it rolled between the five Pokemon and it's like, oh, I was missing Yanmega in the red one. And, oh, I got a Altaria, not Yanmega. So it, it did get harder. And I can't imagine. I'm, I'm sure there are people that are like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get shiny after shiny after shiny. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's one in 100. It's really, really good uh, for 20 minutes of your time. But you don't like if, if, if you see a Cramorant and your group doesn't decide to go that route. Well, now you just miss out on the Cramorant and now you're fighting another Rhyhorn or something. Um, like there is no control. Like if you were thinking yeah. I'm going to get shiny Jigglypuff by doing Dynamax Adventure, I I haven't even seen Jigglypuff yet. Like I've seen Executor like three I times. Have. If you were that person that specifically wants to shiny hunt a pro- Pokemon, you're probably better off for your time to do that outside of Dynamax Adventure, whether that is Masuda or whether that's Overworld Encounter, because you know at the end of that you're guaranteed that whether it takes ten minutes or two weeks. I did eight hours of Dynamax Adventure, and I saw Executor three times. I saw Jigglypuff zero times. So they're, they're, you're trading off control for luck, I guess, is is what the Pokemon company has seemed to be doing in, in these one-off shiny methods that they keep mm-hmm. for a game and not. 
Also, let me interject. Um, do not Dynamax Adventure for hidden ability Pokemon. The ability patch exists now. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's so Di- expensive. Dynamax. It's so ad- expensive, That's though. fine still. If that is what like the one thing that you're looking for, it's cheaper than a Beast Ball. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. Beast Ball is one fifty. The Beast patch is two hundred. Oh, I guess I misread it. I have done eight, nine, ten hours of Dynamax Adventure. I think I just hit two hundred. Yeah, it's a lot, which is fine. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's fine. I. I mean, I'm sure in a future game it'll be. <laughs> what was it like? <laughs> bottle caps were really expensive in yeah. Sun and Moon, right? And then in yeah, Ultra Sun and Moon, they got like a little cheaper. And in this game, you just find them on the ground. Right. Yeah. People um, are just tossing them out. Here you go. And then Bottle mints, cap for you. Mints at the beginning of this game were, were were impossible, and now there's like islands that just generate them every day. And they appear randomly throughout Crown Tundra too. Yeah, I've run across them. Like, oh, what? Okay. Cool. And I'm sure if there's another Pokemon game, they'll take it all away from us again. Of course. But Did you just say if there's another Pokemon <laughs> if, game? You know, if the small <laughs> indie company can, you know, scrape up enough, manage, survive, scrape up survive. enough dollars to put out a new game. All right, we have more to talk about for the Crown Tundra, but we also have a little bit of news we need to tackle. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. And then, like, when you go into a max raid... And then, like, when you go into a max raid... The things like... The things like... So loud. You're so... It is. Yeah, exactly. It was loud enough that it like kind of startled me. We are back from our break. All right, we'll get back to Crown Tundra here in a bit. Let's get through some of this Pokemon news. First bit is pretty unexpected. Twilight Wings is coming out with another episode. Even though they said they were done. <laughs> this is uh, Nothing's ever done. Uh, Pokemon.com. Twilight Wings, the limited animated series set in Galar Region, recently concluded with the seventh episode on Pokemon TV and the official Pokemon YouTube channel. However, however, fans are in a treat for the upcoming release of a new episode called Twilight Wings, The Gathering of Stars. It is currently scheduled for release in November. This special episode will feature familiar characters as long as new faces from the Galar Region. The Twilight Wings production staff reunited to produce the Gathering of Stars, so it will remain true to the previous episodes. Like those episodes, this new chapter in Pokemon Twilight Wings story will be available on Pokemon TV and the official YouTube channel. Please check back for more info. Cool. I mean, I hope it's not... I'm going to trust that it's much more than, here's a gym leader doing stuff. Cool. Next. Here's a champion doing stuff next. Next. Uh, this is off Pokemon.com as well. Celebrate Halloween with Mega Gengar in Pokemon Go raids. If you are taking, if you're, if you're dreaming of taking on a raid boss with Mega Gengar in your party, I'm sure thousands of I people am. are dreaming that. Your days of pinning will soon be over. Pining. 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 Uh, to celebrate the spookiest holiday of the year, the Shadow Pokemon's Mega Evolution will feature Mega Raids will be featured in Mega Raids on October 23rd, replacing Mega Venusaur. Always the the Kanto starter that is out, I suppose. <laughs> uh, since Gengar is Ghost and Poison, team up with Ground, Psychic, Ghost, Dark type attacks. Uh, Mega Gengar is just a few of the many Halloween themed activities taking place in Pokemon Go this year. Uh, there's no end date here. I would imagine November 1st. Yeah, probably. (laughs) This actually brings us into some more Pokemon Go news. First bit being that Latin America will get their own unique event. I'm very excited to hear people complain about this. (laughs) (laughs) Why are they complaining about it? Because they don't. Because Pokemon Go fans are selfish and they want all the events for themselves. Oh. Uh, this year, uh, this year's spirits will return in the annu- in our annual Halloween event in Pokemon Go. We will be celebrating the Day of the Dead for the first time in a special event for trainers in Latin America. 
The Day of the Dead is a holiday observed in Mexico and other parts of America that celebrate the lives and memory of family and friends who are no longer with us. In Mexican tradition, it is said that the spirits of the deceased return to the world of the living during this special time to share a joyful celebration with the ones celebration with their loved ones surrounded by candles, flowers, fruit, bread, sugar skulls, incense, and other traditional foods and decorations. So on Sunday, November 1st to Monday, November 2nd, they will have Pokemon representing different elements of the Day of the Dead, including Cubone, Sunflora, Roselia, Cacnea, Duskull, and Litwick appearing more frequently in the wild. The following Pokemon will be attracted to Incense, Ghastly, Mistrevious, uh, Absol, Shuppet, Duskull, Drifloon, and Litwick. And there will be uh, field research for those players, including Pokemon that will be Marowak, Alolan Marowak, Murkrow, and Duskull. Those will all be shiny. Um, when and sh- may all be shiny. They're not all guaranteed <laughs> shiny. <laughs> when sharing Pan de Miro, M- M- Merito? Marito? Muerto. Ma- Ma- Muerto. Muerto. Pan de Muerto. With Death fam- bread. De- dead bread? <laughs> dead bread. <laughs> With family and friends, don't forget to battle together. Poffins will be available as a special reward for Go Battle League. Check the shop for uh, a special box featuring Poffins, Star Pieces, and Raid Passes. And uh, there will be surprises for the Snapshot. And that's it. Hey, sounds like fun. I wish it was here, too, because I like all the Pokemon that are showing up. <laughs> but it's cool. Yeah, I wonder if they'll do more specific events. I'm assuming this is kind of the start, right? There are probably yeah. plenty of things that Americans don't celebrate that uh, sure. others do. I am a little confused, though. Is this for all of South America, though? It doesn't specifically say <laughs> it what says region. Mexico and other parts of the Americas celebrate it. But then it depends on what they define as Latin America. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Because, and like, like, as far as I'm aware, like, Day of the Dead is like a Mexican tradition. It, right. it is not a Brazilian. It's not an Argentinian. It's like a Mexican tradition. So that's where I was like, why, why would they, they have it in these other places? Yeah, it depends on what they consider, like, what their Latin American region is. I don't know how... F- how far that extends or where I mean, they it... also say that Latin America is supposed to get Corsola and it's still appearing in Texas and Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how they like limit it. Yeah, I don't know. Does it is it based off your profile you set? Is it based off of your location? I don't know how they roll this out. It's cool though. It sounds cool. It sounds like a cool event. Yeah. I mean, anytime Roselia appears more often, I'm into it. Uh, there is some uh, November news here for Pokemon Go off PokemonGoLive.com. November's research breakthrough encounter will be Togetic, the happiness Pokemon, from November 1st through December 1st. I'm, ass- I'm assuming because of Go Battle League, like Togekiss is really good in Go Battle League. That's probably why. Would be my guess. In uh, insert, remember when legendaries were in breakthrough encounters? Yeah, that was like <laughs> yeah. well over a year ago. Why <laughs> give it up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> that ship has sailed. I mean, the ship may come back. Yeah, like, true, true. It's just on a long voyage away from you right now. It's got a world to circumnavigate. Friday, the twenty third of October through November fifth, Darkrai has returned. The mythical Dark Pokemon. Darkrai. November fifth through the sixteenth, a familiar Pokemon will return. They do not. <laughs> <laughs> They're all familiar. Uh, <laughs> I'm just default Lugia Ho. <laughs> it's always Lugia Ho. I don't know. Cresselia? We just had Cresselia. We just had Cresselia. I mean, it's so weird that they just call it a familiar Pokemon. Just Mewtwo? name it. What's oh, a, like a, it's another Pikachu Mewtwo. or Eevee? What's a what's a I, what, I don't what is a, what appears in November? It's ho. It's, for it's not, the only it's thing turkey. I know it's not going to be is Palkia Dialga. It's it's Moltres. It's a bird on fire for. Thanksgivings. It just did Moltres. So? It's a familiar Pokemon. It's it's Pikachu. 
Yeah. The most it's familiar Pokemon. Pikachu wearing a Palkia it, outfit. Uh, it's Pikachu wearing a pilgrim hat. From the 16th through the 27th, Terrakian, Cobalion, and Verizian. I had to look up all these names, so I'm saying them right. Uh, will be in five-star raids. They all end in in. That's how you remember, though. Terrakian, Cobalion. I didn't believe it was Verizian, but it is Verizon, like Verizon Wireless. Verizian is how the... It's just weird that they didn't keep they didn't make them ion. Yeah, I don't know. Language barriers make it easy to say for uh, everyone. I don't know. I mean, it's lion ion. I mean, we do not know what the raid boss will be for November twenty fourth through the thirtieth, but that will be a set period of time where a raid boss will appear. <laughs> Spotlight hours uh, on Tuesday, November 3rd. Cubone will appear. Uh, double the Stardust. Oh. November 10th, Jigglypuff will appear. Double the XP. November 17th, Meowth will appear. Because we haven't gotten enough Meowth in the last like year. Meowth will appear. Nope. Twice the candy. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I and guess. on November 24th, everyone's favorite. Barboach will appear with twice the candy for transferring. Save your transfers for that, I guess. I mean, I am so... I'm at the very limit for storage because I keep waiting for this Go integration. Mm-hmm. End of the year. Uh, they need to hurry because yeah. I don't want to throw 31st things away. December 31st is when it's going to come know. out. Uh, wasn't that when Pokemon Bank came out? It came out like the 30th of December? Well, it came yeah, out it late, late is what it did. Yeah, I felt like it came out real late. Other thing to take note here is that... Uh, they did an egg rotation, so all the eggs are different, except for the 12Ks. Obviously, those just rolled out, so they have no reason to change it. We don't have to go through the entire egg rota- <laughs> rotation here, but if you want to see what's in eggs, I made a graphic that's on the Twitter, twitter.com slash pkmncast, and on Instagram, uh, pkmncast there, too, of everything currently in the new egg rotations so if you're curious of w- if if you're looking for a specific Pokemon and you're curious of where they are, that'll help you, I hope. Uh, last thing here with Pokemon Go before we move on is that uh, in celebration of the Crown Tundra, Ponyta and Surfetch were in Pokemon Go for a good 24 hours. That was a real fast event. Yep. They made Galarian Farfetch spawn everywhere. There is now a way to evolve it into Surfetch. You have to set... Farfetch as your buddy, and then as Farfetch is your buddy, you have to get 10 excellent throws, not in a row, just 10 excellent throws, and then you will have the option to evolve, which is actually really a cool way to do it, and I kind of hope they do more of that in the future. So when was that event? That was the day the Crown Tundra came out. Yep. So I'm glad that I got the news alert in Pokemon Go informing me of that event this morning. (laughs) They're either too early or too late. You can't win. The other thing is they added Galarian Ponyta during this event in raids. Um, and now that the event is over, they put both Galarian Ponyta and Farfetch into 7k eggs. So you can still get them if you like to hatch 7k eggs. Which everyone... And I don't. Does. And uh, the Pokemon Masters uh, Crown Tundra event was uh, nothing. There was one? No. There was one? Which they is, did something interesting. I don't. I don't. I understand what happened here. Uh, like it's no surprise at this point that they've been doing Pokemon Go events to correspond with the anime or the core games or whatever. Pokemon Masters did a Isle of Armor thing. They acknowledged it. They said Isle I of mean, Armor that, is here in the game. They just didn't do I mean, anything. To be fair, they're in the middle of their Halloween event, so they may not have wanted to. Because uh, Pokemon Masters has that? never overlapped 18 of Oh, I know. I'm Look, I'm just trying to be nice for once in my life. I mean, there's already, we don't have to, we don't have time to talk about their, or the, the overall fan base with Masters has been pretty unhappy since the anniversary event has ended. And now that the fact that they missed the release, they didn't do anything for this release, not, not even just acknowledge it, seems worrisome, in my opinion. Why? Well, they acknowledge why, why, the you, what, cause, because because at you, one point I would are because at one point I would say that 
It was very cool when it was Pokemon Day. The Pokemon company sent out an email and they acknowledged Pokemon Go, Sword and Shield, and Masters. Pokemon Duel never got that treatment. Cafe Mix, I don't think, was around at the time. Um, You know, other things in the Pokemon franchise have never gotten that treatment. The only thing outside of the main series games that got acknowledged was Pokemon Go because of how big it is. But for Masters to be on that, like, pedestal of, like, oh, cool, they're acknowledging Masters. Masters is doing something for the... what? When is the Pokemon's birthday? 24th of February? 27th mm-hmm. of February? It was cool. And then Crown Tundra came out, or uh, sorry, Isle of Armor came out, and Masters acknowledged that. That was really cool because again, symmetry. Every, every they're all all their pillars are doing the same thing. They're all acknowledging these big events together. And now Crown Tundra is here. Pokemon Go acknowledged it, but Masters did not. So I mean, what's your worry though? Like that Masters is my worry is just that that I that I don't know. Like I don't, I don't know what is happening there, but I I do know that people are, people are not happy with Masters right now, and they skipped this event, and we don't know what's planned for our, uh, November for Masters. So they so, may like, do something. I just something feel like we're Crown being Tundra left in the dark after, here on Masters. I, they may do something Crown Tundra after Halloween. Yeah, just g- give them some space, give them some breathing room. I mean, they may. So I feel I, like if you're I, coming off a one year anniversary event. You 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 don't you don't lose all that momentum. You got to keep that momentum going, right? Because players came back because of the one year anniversary. Yeah, I mean, but I don't think they've lost the momentum. I think they've had very specific events for their game. Like they are in the middle of a big Halloween event. They may have like I I don't know what they would do for Crown Tundra that couldn't wait until November. And and maybe they learned that players actually don't like overlapping events so they i would were say like, most no, players are saying out. that there's nothing to do in masters right now that's not good log in every day for free gems <laughs> okay how many free gems are we I, like that used to be a thing uh now it's log in for skip tickets that you can't really use yeah i mean i think that i think what's driving people away from masters isn't that there isn't new content it's that they had a really good thing going with the stamina that felt like it wasn't overpowering but also gave you things to do and now some of us are sitting on 1200 skip tickets and you can't and use them fast one, enough and you get one 200 stamina update a day which which is 10 skip tickets which is 10 skip tickets it's just not enough and the events are good but since they raised the cap to 125 and they raised the 6EX problem, um, some of those trick-or-treat boss battles are not fun if you haven't spent all of your time trying to get them up to 125. Like, they can be a very frustrating set of circumstances, uh, especially if you've been unlucky in polls. I think there's just sort of a combination of the getcha thing the stamina being unbalanced, that the current events in the game aren't aren't enough for you to spend out all of your stamina knowing that you won't get it back fast enough. I, I, I don't think that's a hint that they've lost faith in the game. I think that's a hint no, that the I don't game th- needs- I don't think that like I don't think that Masters is folding next week or anything. But I, I do understand like deadlines, right? Like if they're if they're in some sort of transitional period where they're trying to gear they're trying to shift gears into hey we want to make the game better hey we've been really silent for a while and they have been pretty silent um with communication Mm -hmm. that we're working on all this thing all these things because we know fans are not a hundred percent happy and because of that we just haven't had time and we missed the boat on approving everything to coincide with crown tundra i can totally see that happening that's probably maybe what did happen is like they're trying to make sure that they're launching my fingers across that they're launching something to alleviate a lot of the problems that people are expressing. So going into November, December, people are, are positive about masters again. Yeah. Uh, there's no shortage of gotcha games that people seem to love. I'm looking at you. Mm-hmm. Genshin impact. <laughs> Genshin impact. 
I have avoided because every every aspect and everybody who's played it says that it eats their life. And I'm like, look, I got Final Fantasy XIV, which has an incredible patch out right now, and Crown Tundra, which is also an incredible patch right now. I do not need to add this game to my life. Plus, I started playing Among Us. There are things happening. I am swamped. Plus, you know, job. Uh, and I have a job. Oh, you guys have jobs? Yeah. It's nice. We get money. You should try it. <laughs> what is money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope next time we uh, podcast or something, there's more to talk about in regards to Masters. I feel like right now there's nothing. We're just kind of waiting. Yeah. I mean, we already talked about the Halloween event, so. Yeah. There, I mean, until something new happens, like if they're going to do Thanksgiving with I don't know, something and something. <laughs> Malt trays. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Ethan and Moltres. Ethan in a Sigma suit pilgrim outfit with Moltres. This is on Pokemon.com. This is There Are is More Champions Path A Coming. Premium, Champions Path Premium Collection Marnie, which, would, uh, which la- launched on Friday, the same day that Crown Tundra came out. It's almost like we just talked about how Pokemon likes to line up everything at the same time. If you like Marnie, there is a foil card featuring Grim Snarl V, foil card featuring Morpico V, two two pins in this set, a Morpico pin and a Grim Snarl pin. Uh, you also get a play mat featuring Marnie with her favorite Pokemon partners. It comes with eight booster packs of Champions Path, and um, this was on Pokemon Center. It sold out. Uh, no surprise that people like Marnie. And uh, it came with a playmat, which is cool. I like the fact that the headline on the main page is Get Grim and Hangry in the Pokemon TCG. I hate that. <laughs> uh, I don't... I'm, I'm, I'm assuming these would be at, like, Target and Walmart and stuff. Uh, but sure. Champion's Path has been so hard to find that good luck. If you find it, probably pick it up. The other thing that came uh, out is there was a same day, October 23rd, there was a uh, Champion's Path collection, Hatterene V. This features uh, one foil card of Hatterene V, the oversized foil card of Hatterene V, four TCG booster packs of Champion's Path, and a code card. And that is um, prob- that was also sold out uh, <laughs> on Pokemon Center. <laughs> Pokemon Center did restock base set or, or Elite Trainer Box of Champion's Path. Uh, I did tweet that. Um, it did sell out. Uh, in, in like six or seven hours, so it didn't sell out completely, but as as of this recording, it is sold out now. So if you're still trying to get Champion's Path, it is, uh, it's rough out there. <laughs> did we talk about the Pokemon Center hoodies? We didn't. I was going to transition into there is a Ball Guy plush on Pokemon Center. Yeah. Um, that is. Yeah, there is. 20, 20 bucks, the ball, get your Ball Guy. Is um, he wearing the, like the original? Yep. Okay. You there's, know, a lot, there's a lot of stuff on Pokemon Center. Um, they put they okay. added Urshifu plushes, Cubfu plushes, Galarian Slowpoke plushes. They re-added... A, they, for those that don't know, there's what's called the Classic Collection on Pokemon Center, which is normally like suits or, or ties and dre- dress, dress socks and tie bars and handkerchiefs. They just added more of that. It's a lot of Charizard stuff. You want Charizard socks, Charizard bow tie, Charizard mm, handkerchief. Mm. I'm sorry, this ball guy doll is horrifying. It is. I kind of want it. Ugh. They added an Alcremi plush. They added uh, overpriced jewelry and charms that you can get. They added Charmander Holiday Lights Pokemon plush. It is unfortunately very cute. They added uh, four, four or five hoodies. They added a... Um, Sable, they added four, five beautiful Halloween hoodies. Bonnet, Sableye, Mimikyu, Gengar, and everyone's spookiest Pokemon, Lucario, uh, yeah. all fit into the... <laughs> one is not like the other here. <laughs> so, I hate hoodies. What is wrong with you? Get we, out of we, my life. We know this about me. How are we friends, Greg? I <sighs> Because I tolerate your presence, but... <laughs> This Sableye thing is making me rethink my entire hoodie stance because I love it very much. Hoodies are nice around the house. It's a little chilly. You throw on a hoodie. 
I hate having the thing hanging off the back of my neck. And when I sit down, I have something between me and the chair that's not all the way on my back. What? It's halfway How down my back. How are you doing it's this? It's annoying. Sit different. I, <laughs> You uh, you understand that I'm a gay man, and we do not sit in chairs right as a uh, rule. You know this. Don't stereotype. <laughs> it is not a stereotype when everybody does it. The problem is the... Uh, no, I'm a pass on these hoodies. I don't need extra attachments, ears, tails, etc. No, no. Not yet. <laughs> well... When the event happens where I do need them, I'll be sure to let everyone know. Okay. okay. Maybe Hughes sold out. Lucario sold out. Of course Bayonet, the Lucario sold out. Not sold out. Of course. Sableye, no one likes Bennett. Bennett is so cool. He has zippers. Yeah, but the hoodie does not. <laughs> I mean, it has one. It has yeah, one. I mean, it has one zipper. Uh, and it, it, what's Gengar? Set us on Gengar. Gengar sold out. No. Pass. Uh, thanks to Brandon for sending in the ball guy stuff uh, from our Slack community, by the way. Just trying to give credit. Did you, did you get the email where, where they had the animated dancing ball guy? I probably got that email. Oh my, it was horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's been a long week with the, uh, with the, the DLC dropping and twitch changing their rules and me panicking and it's been a heck of a week pokemon home got updated should we talk about this is there much to talk about no i mean well, I everything mean, got updated so. everything got updated to take crown tundra stuff yeah was there anything more special than, than that no i don't think so uh, they added a small thing to home I mean, at this point, it's still hard to recommend home to somebody who... Oh. Yeah, what small thing did they add? Okay. Uh, so they added compatibility with the Crown Tundra uh, Part 2 of the Sword and Shields expansion pass. Mm-hmm. They added a save feature for search and sorting settings in the Pokemon boxes. That was big. Well, not big, but something. <laughs> Meh. They added a new category for popular Pokemon to the trade ranking. So that's where you can search of like what's being requested the most, what's not. And they uh, fixed some other issues to ensure a user-friendly experience. I don't, know what the, that, I don't know what that means, but we're at version 1.3 now. Still can, I guess, confidently say that Home has been updated more than Bank has in the first year <laughs> than Bank was in seven years. So it has that going for it. Um, there is still no transferring to Pokemon Go yet. And we still <gasps> don't know what that is. I mean, I don't think... From, don't, from Pokemon from Go. Poke, I don't know if any of us expected that this weekend. No, but it would have been nice. Already enough to do. What I have learned this past week is that I could easily spot any American in my Twitch chat because they don't know how time zones work and they don't know that there are other countries <laughs> in other time zones. <laughs> Of all weekend being like, when is the DLC? When is the DLC? Oh, that that's like, uh, yeah, in 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 my Twitter, mm -hmm. some or was it that? And they were like, when when is the DLC? I thought the DLC was coming out on Thursday. I said, yeah, nine p.m. Pacific, and they said, yeah. well, that's Friday. And I'm like, what? How East Coast centric are you? Because it's midnight on the East Coast. And like, uh, yeah, but the rest of the country is still in Thursday, buddy. Well, yeah. So this was the thing I, I had to continue to point out to people. So in the on the Japanese Pokemon website and on the in the Japanese YouTube video that announced the Crown Tundra, it said Friday the 23rd. And then on the English YouTube and on the English Pokemon website, it said the Thursday the 22nd. Most people... I, I, I will give our podcast listeners credit because most of them are adults that can probably function in this world, uh, unlike Twitch chat, which is out of control. Um, but we understand that Japan is in the future, right? They're like 12 hours ahead of us. <laughs> I, so, yes, they are in the future. The future is also now. Yes. I can call the future right now. I can call them and say, what's tomorrow like? Please tell me. So we're recording this podcast at 3 p.m. on Sunday. It is technically Monday in Japan right now as we're recording this. So this makes sense. Now, I'm going to make this a little complicated. <laughs> it does not make 
make sense. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this a little complicated. There was a third trailer for Europe, the UK trailer, and the Europe trailer said that it comes out on Friday, the twenty third. So we have the UK. Uh, or Europe and Japan saying Friday and the U.S. saying the 22nd. So, no, the Pokemon company, Game Freak, Niantic, whoever you want to blame, did not lie to you. <laughs> I had plenty of that of, like, they lied to us. They said it was going to come out on Thursday. It is still Thursday, buddy. It is 8 p.m. Thursday. We're still in Thursday. <laughs> but anyways, if we take the time zones from the U.K., and Japan, and we crossed that over with the U.S. time zones, there was like a six-hour window where the game could have came out, which was anywhere between 6 p.m. Central Time and and midnight Central Time, which is 4 to 10 Pacific and 7 to 1 a.m. Eastern. So that was the window that everything kind of overlapped, and I think the DLC dropped around 8 p.m., which was the same time Ponyta and Farfetch dropped in Pokemon Go, and Home went down for maintenance and everything. So it, it did come out on Thursday. It was no lying. I, I, there's like this gamer mentality where like, oh, most games come out midnight, so Game Freak lied to me because it didn't come out at midnight. I want to remind you that the Isle of Armor came out at like 10 a.m. or something like that. <laughs> uh, so no, Game Freak did not lie. It did come out on Thursday in America. It came out on Friday in the U.K., Came out Friday of Japan, all at the same time, worldwide release. It was just funny because I could tell that the person complaining that Game Freak lied or it's not out yet was definitely American. <laughs> but did anybody tell Japan about Time Zone? You know, that's a good question. I still don't... I guess the reason they probably didn't solidify the time, this is my only maybe justification, is because they didn't... They had to line it up with Pokemon Go. And so if Pokemon Go wasn't ready... And they released it because they they wanted Ponyta and Surfetch to come out, and it all came out at the same time. So, but I don't get Nintendo. This is not a Game Freak or Pokemon company. This is a Nintendo thing. Nintendo is this also this company that doesn't tell you when the Smash update's coming out. I think Smash players just expect it at like eight PM Central Time at this point. But how many updates have Smash Brothers have gotten? Seven, eight. Yeah. And yet, all of these updates, they have never given a time when it comes That's out. That's what keeps it exciting. Mm-hmm. Is that, is that what we're taking for excitement at this point? Apple yes. used to do the same thing, dude. Yeah. That's true. But now Apple will tell you when you can pre-order, when it will ship. You know what? But they used to That's, do that, Isn't yeah. it funny how my coworkers are just like your Twitch stream, where Apple tells you when you can pre-order and when it's actually available, <laughs> and the day of the Apple announcements, they're calling you up and saying, please order me this phone. I'm like, it doesn't, literally it doesn't, doesn't exist it's yet. It's not a thing yet. Oh, believe me, as a person who has to deal with it, we are well aware of those dates. Well, that was all the news I have. Uh, going back Ooh. to Crown Tundra, just a little bit more before we wrap up the show here. I'm assuming neither of you guys did the star tournament, the updated... No, I haven't gotten that no, far yet. No, not yet. I, I heard that the first... I, I haven't done it yet either because I've been stuck in raids. Um, I've heard the first time it's pretty easy, but uh, once you beat it, it increases the difficulty. Um, but there is still no level scaling. Uh, and I hmm. think... What game had level... Was that Emerald? Where like no matter what you brought in, it scaled? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so people, Pretty sure it was Emerald. People were a little bummed out that. I heard the dialogue for the um, Star stuff is good. So next week we can talk a little bit more I about that. I mean, that's at the Rose Stadium, right? Yeah, it's at the Rose Stadium. Look, that's old Galar. <laughs> I'm in new Galar. Old Galar is dead to me. I mean, I do like that they're like applying the update to old Galar. Like when I did my daily stow on side task and the dude's like, here's a DNA splicer. I was like, oh, how charming and sweet. I completely <laughs> was not expecting this. Is that the guy that says, I guess all the time? Yes. Okay. Come back tomorrow. If you yeah. might have something you want, can, I guess. Can they program in a little bit of enthusiasm in the, in the next patch? There, there is, we talked about this last week where we were hoping that there was going to be some surprise of, uh, you know, well, de it depends on what you want as a surprise, right? For me, having yeah. a dude in the, in the Rose Tower 
letting me use a, a Pokemon I caught in black and white in competitive ranked was a huge surprise that they didn't talk about. There is a surprise in this game, but it's way too spoilery for us to talk about this episode, so we'll save it for next episode, but um, uh, it has to do with the main Calyrex storyline, so yeah, I think that was... Uh, yep. I think it was a good surprise, honestly. It was. Is it going to make me happy or sad? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Pokemon return following you. Yep. It is still weird that they just don't apply that to the current wild area. <laughs> yeah. That would I be agree. a very free that would be a very nice free update that they could do. But yeah, take a piece of advice from me. If if you want creepy you're playing on Halloween, you want creepy vibes, you own a Blacephalon. <laughs> Make a Blacephalon the first oh, Pokemon in your no, party and walk you. around in the overworld. Oh, no. it just, oh, it's so freaky. <laughs> no, no, no. It's great. <laughs> if you can't handle super freaky, uh, Nialigo will also give you a nice, <laughs> disturbing, maybe not as creepy vibe. I already have a problem with Talonflame being angry when I stop. <laughs> Isn't that great? It just like sits there and it's like, <laughs> get a move on. I want to fly. I was personally disappointed. No new ribbons for me. I like collecting ribbons. No new ribbons, unfortunately. But you can mark hunt for the Galar birds, the Galarian, Articuno, Zapdos, Small Trace. They can have a mark on them. Which is not a ribbon, but appears in the ribbon tab, so good enough for me. Uh, those those three Pokemon are shiny locked, so you can't get them shiny anyways. Uh, but you can mark hunt them, so that's exciting. Uh, and I think is that your next hunt? Are you gonna hunt? Oh, I'm definitely yeah, I'm definitely gonna mark hunt those. Personality or higher. Uh, so I don't want weather, and I don't want um. There's rankings of markings. <laughs> the like the, the uncommon <laughs> mark is like the most common. And then there's like the weather and then there's like time of day that would be like morning or, or whatever dozy. Um, and then there's personality. So and then and the only thing higher than personality is the rare mark, which is a one in a thousand chance, which is three in one in three thirty three if with the mark charm. So I will mark out those. I think everyone who's encountered the birds are happy with how they did it. Uh, I think the common theme here is in 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 past, and I'm I'm trying not to be a spoiler. I think people people were definitely really disappointed in X and Y with how they handled Zygarde, with how they handled Mewtwo. They just kind of plopped them in a cave, and overall, kind of since X and Y, maybe even like Black and White, I would say most people have kind of been disappointed that legendary encounters don't feel legendary. I wouldn't say that Dynamax Adventure makes legendary Pokemon feel legendary, although they are fun. But I think they did the Reggies here and how they did the birds, I think, answered those issues that people had. I think we can go more in depth than that next week. Yeah, I, I haven't pursued those yeah. paths yet. There are, there's a Diglett equivalent in this game. I don't there know is. if you guys have seen that. I have. I think it's okay we talk about this. Uh, the Swords of Justice are in the game. They are not in Dynamax Adventure. They mm -hmm. are in the Crown Tundra. You have mm -hmm. to find their footprints to make them spawn. The only one that I'm confused about as to where to go next is Verizian. I think once they spawn, they stand there. They don't like. I think so. Run around. <laughs> and I believe they stand there, but like finding the track, I I'm I know where to find the tracks for the other two, but like after my initial attempt, I'm like, and I'm out of the these tracks and i yeah. don't know where to go so a couple is this of the tasks that sonia gives you yes yes oh man i thought that was the legendary birds all right i think for the birds you just go to the tree you just go to the tree yeah so there there are four there are four legendary things one is sonia with the musketeers one is the birds at the tree one is calyrex yep. and then the last one yep. is the reggies so yep that is the i guess the they're all legendary, and they're all the story of this game, which the crown... If, if, if the olive armor was very battle-heavy, which it was, Move Tutors, Dojo, uh, Urshifu being extremely competitive and annoying in, in ranked battles, um, this is all about legendaries. <laughs> I, I think when, when people... I, I, would, I would probably say if anyone is like, I like the Crown Tundra better, 
probably because they don't care about competitive, which is fine. Yeah. Like, that is totally okay, right? You don't have to like every aspect of Pokemon in order to like Pokemon. But there's no denying that the Olive Armor was built around mints and and uh, move tutors and vitamins and EV training. And even, you know, restrictive sparring really taught you that you should EV train to be competitive. Yeah. You need to collect 50 tracks for each. So that good old 150 number. <laughs> uh, but there are more than 50 tracks. So there are. If that... You, you don't have to be precise. It's not like Diglett, where you're going to spend two hours looking for one Diglett. There are more than 50, um, so just keep that in mind. Only other thing I think we can maybe talk about is that there is kind of a disappointing reward for completing your Pokedex this time around. Uh, for completing your Pokedex in the Crown Tundra, or sorry, in the Isle of Armor, you got the Marked Charm, which I guess maybe some people wouldn't care about. <laughs> I, I, did, I definitely did. Uh, you got the Marked Charm, you got a crown, you got your certificate. In this, you do get a clothing item. I don't want to spoil it, uh, but there's no charm. Uh, you get three golden bottle caps, 50 rare candy, the certificate, and a clothing item that I will not spoil. So that's all you get for completing your Pokedex. What other charm would they have, though? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, Hit, I mean, they only get like a, I would say hidden charm, but you can only get hidden in raids, mm. and that wouldn't apply for hidden mm. ability. Well, they gave Shiny you an XP are... charm at the beginning of the Crown Tundra, or at the Isle of Armor, remember? They give you that free get bonus experience. Yeah. Maybe like a catch charm that makes catching even easier. Oh, but you get, that at, you get that already. You get the yeah. critical catch. You get the critical catch charm from the main story. Yeah. Uh, well, like a super critical catch charm. <laughs> I... Okay, so uh, the, the the last thing I want to talk about, because, yeah, the catch... the. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time since we had to catch a legendary Pokemon. Yeah. This is not a spoiler. You do catch Calyrex at one point. I think this is yeah. obvious. <laughs> it's not a spoiler that the legendary Pokemon presented. That's like saying, hey, Zamazenta and Zashian on the cover <laughs> of these games, you get to catch those dudes. You get to catch those. It is so frustrating to me that they they spent a DLC dedicated to competitiveness. They gave you a better way to get vitamins. They gave you the move tutors. They introduced Urshifu. They got bottle caps and golden bottle caps. All that stuff. And yet, not every Pokemon you want to catch should have perfect IVs. Which is weird to say, and I'll explain. There are certain Pokemon in the game that, that slower is better. And it's not, and one of the reasons would be Trick Room. Trick Room in competitive reverses the turn order. So um, a slower Pokemon goes first, a faster Pokemon goes last. And that is based off the speed stat. But there is also things that are based off of, um, there are moves that use the speed stat, or there's moves that use the attack stat, or like um, Foul Play, it does more damage depending on how high the opponent's attack stat is. You know, if you're running... A Gengar, who is a special attacker, you probably don't want to have a high attack stat because you're weak to foul play. Um, so it's not specifically speed. But if, if for whatever reason, not spoilers aside, I want a very slow Calyrex because I want to use Calyrex in Trick Room. People know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to beat around the bush here. Uh, but I have no way of getting a slow speed Calyrex without soft resetting. Which, I think we've established at this point in the games that Game Freak doesn't want us to soft reset anymore. <laughs> right? I think uh, they locked the starters, they locked Type Null, they locked Zashi and Zamazenta, blah, 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 blah. They locked all of these, right? Even the Regis, if you wanted to shiny hunt the Regis, you can actually just defeat them and lo and behold, they respawn again. And Or you could run away, and lo and behold, they're still there. Um, which is what a lot of people liked about Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, Latios Latias, you could just run away. Um, I think running away or defeating uh, is a better way to interact with your game than turning it on and turning it back off again. Uh, and yet, they still have not solved this issue of if I am actually trying to be competitive and I do want to control certain stats, I can always make stats better. 
If I if I caught, you know, if by starter score bunny, you know, didn't have perfect IVs, I can use a bottle cap, I can use a golden bottle cap, I can use a mint. I have so much control. The thing I cannot do is I cannot decrease a stat. I and and if 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 trick room or any other sort of game mode um a, needs stats to be a certain point, I have no control over that. And so I am stuck with soft resetting because that is the only option you have given me, Game Freak. Uh, there's room service. Oh, gosh. Okay. I'm I was not, going to say the same I'm thing. I'm not going to put room service <laughs> on this Pokemon because I need it to hold a different item. Well, that's your problem. Well, they make clearly, your choices, dude. They clearly gave you room service. So on top of that, a catch rate of three, which uh, is is has been the catch rate for a long time. Legendary, uh, there there's... Uh, each Pokemon have different catch rates, right? The highest catch rate you can get is a Pidgey, which I think is 255. The lowest catch rate you can get is a mythical or a legendary Pokemon like Mewtwo, um, Articuno, Zapdos. You know, these have a catch rate of three. Same in the Ultra Wormhole. You know, when you found Giratina in the Ultra Wormhole, also had a catch rate of three. It's so many Pokeballs to try to catch. They hand you another master ball i right am not going I... to waste my master ball on a static encounter because okay. the second I... I do the second i do uh, i'm gonna catch calyrex in a master ball i'm gonna take two feet into an absol which is shiny and it's gonna use parish song and i'm gonna be like i don't have a master ball anymore and it just I use parish song i have a fundamental question that you probably can't answer because i i can't answer it how did i end up with five master balls you get one master ball in the story yeah you get another master ball in the uh Isle of Armor, right? They give you one? Yeah. You get another Master Ball in Crown Tundra? Yeah. Wait, when did they give me three? a Master Ball in the Isle of Armor? Did they not? No. no not that I remember. I, I, I think they did. I have five. I don't know how I got five. Mm, you won the lotto? I have not won the lotto. Did you, take, did you get surprise traded a Pokemon holding a Master Ball, release that Pokemon Master Ball, didn't know that the Pokemon was holding the Master Ball, then automatically went into that, inventory? I mean, that's possible. That is possible. I have six Master Balls, but the only reason I have so many is because I sped run the game, got the Master Ball, didn't use it, then gave it to a Pokemon, traded it to myself, and then deleted the save to speed run it again. So every time I sped run, I saved the Master Ball for myself. Uh, uh, I will say that I, since I had only spent ten balls catching, uh, I think your argument is null and void, because it didn't take me that long, so get better. Oh, okay. Anyways, I've I, in my 20 hours of the DLC experience, three hours have been in front of Calyrex throwing from your balls. <laughs> uh, Resetting. I was luxury balls, and it only took me 10, so... Hey, luxury ball and premier ball have the same catch rate. Yeah, I'm just so saying... they do. Wait, no, they do. They do. They do. Yeah. I, that's what I'm saying, Steve. Get better. They have almost gotten to the point where they have eliminated software setting altogether in their games. Almost. The only thing they need to do for competitive at this point is give me an NPC, give me an item, let me zero out an IV stat, whether that's attack, special attack, or speed. Like, those are the three. I, you would never need to zero out, I don't think, defense or special defense. That, that's not true. Um, you would want to zero out defense if you were running. It is stupid, dumb, complicated. Like... <laughs> <laughs> for for like a Pokemon like I think Celesteela, Celesteela's like best attack is its is Celesteela the right example or is it Nihiligo? Anyways, one of the Ultra Beasts. If you don't know how Beast Boost works, Beast Boost would boost their best stat. So if a uh, Ultra Beast's best stat was attacked, was attack when you knock out a Pokemon, then the attack stat gets a boost. Whereas if the Ultra Beast's best stat was defense. If you knock out a Pokemon, the Pokemon will get a defense boost. I think it is stack attacka, where if you were to have zero, its best attack is defense. But if you were to zero out of its out its defense, but have a hindering nature on the defense, you can actually push its attack to be higher than its defense. So then, when stack attacka defeats a Pokemon, instead of getting a defense boost, it gets an attack boost. So uh, this isn't just like the zeroing out stats is is more so is it, not only restricted to Trick Room. There's many reasons why you wouldn't want to do it. So that's like the last thing we need competitively is something to do that. Otherwise, I'm stuck in front of Calyrex for two hours resetting. And that's not fun. 
Because I could be playing Dynamax Adventure, which is You fun. could just be using room service. No, I'm not going to use room service. It's a, well, that's your problem then. Then, then, yep. then your yep. price for they not gave, doing what they give you is sitting in front of Calrix yeah, for two hours. They, they gave you a solution choice. you don't want to take. No, room service is not good. It's not good. Can we talk about one more thing? Uh, yes. All right. This is a little spoilery, nothing to do with the I story. I know what though. you're cutting to get this in, and I'm not happy about it. Uh, no question of the week this week. We're running. I see? We're running real late in time. Uh, Will, give us our Pokemon of the week. So, last week's Pokemon of the week. What did I have to say about that, dude? Uh, well, Greg, you yep. were there. I was there. <laughs> Greg and I were having lunch. I got invited to a ro- remote raid and somebody in Indianapolis and I was like why did you bother to do a remote remote raid for that one uh it's a first level pokemon that likes to do building buildings and it shares its name with the as I called it non-held item that it holds yes because it's like right cuz farfetch has a leak yeah and it's like why doesn't this dude have a plank <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's that Pokemon? It's Chatot. It's never Chatot except for the one time that it was. It's Timber. Timber, you are correct because you were at the table. I was at the table. I was so confused because I was (laughs) like, "You want me to use a remote remote raid pass for a Timber raid?" For a Timber. And I did, did it, you use though. that remote pad? You did. I, I did, and I didn't have a timber in my Pokedex, so, so uh, you know win, what? Win, it win. all worked out in the end. What is, uh, oh, wait, timber? Uh, the Machomp. There's not a lot. Machop wannabe? Yeah. There's not a lot about it. Uh, timber and Machop are both fighting type Pokemon with a base stat total of 305. Gender ratio is 75% male, 25% female. Most commonly associated with construction sp- sites in their respective regions. They have gu- guts as a possible ability. And they both reach their final evolution by having to trade evolve. Got a pretty good, but not great, shuffle like that. All right, you ready for this week? Born ready. I can guarantee that no one is going to be able to get this one right without looking something up. Nobody's (laughs) going to be able to do it off the top of their head. Guaranteed. Here we go. Last night, I was on a Dynamax adventure with a buddy when one of the rental Pokemon that is offered, well, it took me completely by surprise. I thought it was a glitch. Someone had misspelled Pukumuku or something. No, though, it was a real Pokemon from Galar that I had just completely forgotten about. I guess this Pokemon falls into that class of Pokemon where you expect them to be one type, but they are actually something completely different. This coming from someone who decided to play through the Crown Tundra with an all-Ultra Beast team. I am not talking Pseudo-Wudo level, more of a consideration that the Pokemon should be a water type when it is not. In a way, this week's Pokemon is a cousin to Stunfisk. Not Glaren Stunfisk, though. It shares typing with the original Unova Stunfisk. The other factor I should point out, and now more in common with Galarian Stunfisk, is be careful where you step. Accidentally stepping on one of these could be quite a shocking experience. There you go. <laughs> if anybody remembers that this Pokemon actually exists, I I do. Would be I know. Amazed. I know what it is. I, uh... Well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a giveaway uh speaking of sword and shield uh if you haven't picked up sword and shield or you maybe only have one version and you want the other version uh or and or you are cheap and you're like if i won this giveaway it's a free easy christmas present to somebody else <laughs> uh which whichever works for you that uh we are giving away uh a copy of sword with the expansion pass a copy of shield with the expansion pass um for the next two ish three ish weeks completely free uh that will be in the show notes just click the link um you just got to follow the twitch to enter uh pretty easy uh but we're doing that 
Uh, speaking of Twitch, I'll continue to be streaming Crown Tundra, continue to be doing Dynamax Adventures with people in chat, continue to uh, try to get my zero IV Calyrex for reasons I need them for. <laughs> but uh, twitch.tv slash pkmencast. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of podcast listeners came through the last week, so shout out to all you Yay. guys. They're always like... Hi, sometimes I'm in chat, so you can say hi to me. Me oh, too, sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, they're always like, listen to the podcast for long time. For first, first time Twitcher, long time podcaster. Listener. Mm. You can stay up to, uh, stay up to damn Pokemon news on Twitter, PKMNCast. Same on Instagram where I post hopefully helpful graphics for people. Um, PKMNCast there. Greg is at White Wing. Will is at Wash in the Sink. I'm at Dragging a Lake. Otherwise... We'll be back next week, and uh, we'll have your spoilers for Crown Tundra, all all of Yay. them. So uh, all of it will be spoiled next week. Look, the the look the the story is like two hours. If you can't do two hours of story in <laughs> ten days, <laughs> just if you are waiting to get it for Christmas as the whole complete set, or hoping to win it, next week will be spoilery. So there are people who are waiting, Steve. I know, I know, I know. All right. Thank you for listening. This has been another episode of the Pokemon Podcast, and we are super effective. Super Stantler stands forever. Thank you for listening to another episode of It's Super Effective. A shout out to our producers this episode. Kevin, Casey, Liam, Patrick, Jetsy, Matthew, Kay, Catherine, Steph, and Courtney. And a shout out to our executive producers of Spencer and Anthony. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. If you too want to support if I cannot talk, if you too want to support this podcast, you can head over to patreon.com slash it's super effective, or you can just head to ise.cash and you can support us as well. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next week.